somebody. Um, you see there from the opening shots, a couple of old choppers scooting about, uh, wettish, dampish conditions, third cut, not a pile of grass on it really, and things like that there. And it kind of sums up the, the, the year for a lot of contractors in certain parts of, of, of this little island. There are some areas maybe that didn't get as much rain, you know, um, like around Glen Wallace there, the Wallace Brothers, you know, Garden of Eden down there, County Armagh, you know. <laughs> but anyway, this is really about just a bit of crack and to let, you know, people know, this is what I believe happens as all, all of our close networks of friends. So big Jimmy and I all last winter, every day, send them pictures of harvesters. You need to buy that, you need a second harvester, Jimmy. And we all know he is the 9850, as I call it, the new type head puts a lot of grass in but this whole crack started you need a second harvester and I'd love a harvester and I wanted a 6950 with a 14 litre Cummins I had my heart set in one of them very hard to find by the way um, not so many of them the 6750 6850 would definitely have been uh, back in the day the, the, the much more popular machine and I looked at a few and very nearly bought one off a local lad but I just Jimmy then started and he had found a 6850 and he went and looked at it and, and I was like, oh, I don't know, I think a 6 is what I want. So Jimmy then was like, well, I just want something for a bit of crack, but I could take it out the odd day if the pressure's on and that kind of a thing. So Jimmy went and bought a lovely 6850, as you can see in the videos, but it gave trouble at the start. <laughs> That's before we started mine. And then I came across this 7980. Now, that's a fair old jump up in terms of, of a harvester of, of a 6950 that I was thinking about to a 7980. But I suppose Johnson Gelpman, now Murs, whatever way we want to want to word that, Gethin basically got in touch and he'd taken this one in and just replaced it for a, an 88. Uh, Similar-ish kind of setup, only just, just modernising it a little bit for the guy. And, so I set my heart on, on this baby here and we, we, for want of a better word, we made arrangements and, and we brought her home. And the reason I really wanted a Cummins engine deer is because if you, if you go way back to some of the early videos that we've made, and one of the questions was asked to me, Donkey, what is your favorite sounding engine? And I'm not going to lie, I always thought those big old deers with that 19 liter, Commons engine or even the 14 just sounded mega so we made arrangements and we bought this 7980 and you know in many ways having experienced the 97 last year with the new uh, 18 liter engine no ad blue uh, the way they've actually it on bigger tires but narrower you can really see the improvements but nevertheless I bought this Jimmy bought his and all year we were planning to get it out together and I bought mine that I would do the maintenance and tidy it up myself got a little bit of help all right I got a lot of help actually by the way but I just thought it was a quicker way to get it but she had sat about a while and she was very rusted up get a look at that big engine in there that's that's what really turned me on about her. Maybe hard to see in the darkness, but I'm sure we could get a shot in daylight of that turbo in there, 19 litres of just raw muscle. And um, we got her tuned up and the whole spout lining was all good enough. The blower was, we thought, okay. Knives, got through it all. I tidied a lot so the pickup reel up. She's still very dirty from that, that last night we were out. And we, <laughs> we, we took her out, big Jimmy had an issue with a 6850, he had a few of them at the start. So he was parked up in the corner of the field, pressure was on. There was a big job to try and get in and I was like, oh, I bit the bullet. I was nervous at taking her out. So I took her out and we started and we left it about 20 acres and had a bit of clay and we stuffed her solid. Then a bit of time passed by and we got back to um, Grassman HQ's third cut and took her out again. It was very dry, very sticky at grass. And again, we got about a hundred yards down the sward, nice and easy. Blah. 
stuff there took us absolute ages to clean her out and just put down to real rusty going and anyone that knows anything about this series of chopper will will agree with me they're not the easiest to clean out you have your inspection hatch up there and then you're right down into the tower then you have the old plate you have to lie in below and open it down to clear it and when you've got a bit of timber on you as i do way too much timber um it's a bit of a squeeze but you can get in so we, we we stuffed her soil and we brought her back into the yard we had the big wagon out working away we were under no pressure we knew the wagon would would, would get the would get the job done but um then we cleaned her all out and the young lad uh joseph and and, and ruth actually helped us uh, get it all cleaned out and he said to me he says I've never driven a fast track before basically and I was enjoying that we run out and there's no point in cleaning her out to, to not go back to the field so we went back to the field and we persevered we took it nice and easy and do you know what I'm going to tell you she, she didn't blow up the rest of the day but you can see in the camera footage can show you she struggled to blow and struggled to blow and uh, then big Jimmy we were away down getting set up for the plan and we were home when the lorries fairly sharp we'd stayed down the night tidying all up and up the road we came and Big Jimmy rings and he says, hey, I've just hit an old stone, knocked a pile of blades back here, I'm under pressure, rain was on, rain was actually on, grass was in great order, ground conditions weren't, and they were given a very bad forecast. And his big harvester, they had literally started at 12 o'clock that night, because it was a, a no Sunday work job, but Jimmy won't work on a Sunday anyway. We, so he'd been working from like half 12 on, and they had done a lot. The, the mood was low, probably, and he'd hit that. So the 9-8 was there lifting, but there was a lot to get in. So I says, right, let's go. Well, hey, we took her out. Conditions weren't great. Connor was there with the 70, 60, the tri-axle smith. She absolutely loved it. Yes, going round corners, you could still see uh, she maybe wasn't just blowing great, but every load we did, she got better and better and better and better. And you can see all the dirt still on her. We, we, we haven't, she was so wet when we came in, I said, I'm just going to let that all dry off in the shade here. We get up home from, uh, we're away to the plan. We, when we get home from the plan, we'll attack her and clean her all down. And you never know, there might be a wee bit, a wee bit more to do. But like, you know, she still is only starting to just get a bit of a shine coming on even to the to the auger there so johnny blakely painted a lot of bits of the header i think that was the weakest part of her painted some of the panels out round her the avloc box here we got this all painted and just uh, tidied and tightened up and um yeah so she's 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 only in 650s and she still sits out beyond the three meter rail and that's kind of what I was getting at about how you can see the advancements in the new one. So Jimmy and I got our harvester each and we went out that night and he got his um, going again. And we got the two of them running side by side for a wee bit. So that's really what this video was about. Just the two Egypts um, having a bit of fun. And, you know, we, we, we'd had planned to try and get the 6850, the 7980 and uh, nine eight all together for a bit of a lineup, but didn't happen but look watch this space next year is a new year we've done what the mechanics asked us to do um liam and uh, decky at johnson gelton's get a few hours on her see what the fault codes and all is coming up and we'll get a good rip at trying to sort any of that stuff out over the winter so that's what we've done but she's a pure owl yoke 3166 engine hours on her when we changed the oil there so she won't have done many since and there's 1800 chopping hours on it and running that big commons block now so hope you enjoy the wee bit of the wee video of just us having me having a little bit of fun for once um and it was always something we wanted to do uh, we felt it was important you know to, to to have a, a bit of a chopper in the fleet. Uh, is it the ultimate chopper that I want? No, it's not. Um, I know what I want. Um, if business is kind to us, um, one day we'll have the one that I want here. 
Um, I would love a class 492 at some point. I've always said that. I've always probably been my favourite chopper of all time, like an 870 or maybe an 890 or a 900. But I do firmly believe in what Harry Wilson told us all those years ago. Uh, an 850, 870 uh, is the best bang for buck harvester you'll buy for cost and maintenance and wear parts. He believed that the 890s and the 900s back in the day nearly were starting to shovel too much horsepower in for what the rest of the machine. And in terms of the whole forager world at the minute, there's, there are big changes coming. I don't know what they all are, but that's our old boss. And we're delighted we have her. So keep her to everybody and remember, it's okay to not be okay.